Hey, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Want to take you guys through a $1,000 full setup gaming PC build. Now, before I get into this build, I'll right off the top say that I probably could have made concessions in some areas to fit in an even better GPU, but I feel like the advantageous elements of having things like a bigger SSD, having a mechanical hard drive included were something important that I think you should be having in this kind of budget. And again, I do know that there were a few sacrifices that could have been made to get an even better GPU. Also, I do want to say that prices right now specifically do seem to be a little tiny bit higher than what I'm normally used to. Nevertheless, the deals are still relatively good. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And for this build, I am going the AMD NVIDIA route. So the CPU is the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 3.6 GHz 6 core processor. Now there's actually a really good deal on this over on Amazon. You can get it for $172 and change. It's not going to be in stock until May 23rd, but that is an awesome deal on a 3600, which is a six core CPU, 12 threads. And really these Ryzen CPUs are a standout, even at a mid-range budget at a high-end budget amd is really killing it with their cpu offerings right now and getting a six core 12 thread processor for just 172 bucks i mean that already tells you how of much of a good deal it is 3.6 gigahertz 4.2 gigahertz uh, boost clock and it's just a great cpu to go along with your games you can also do relatively good video editing live streaming and things of that nature with this cpu and all of that is coming at a very healthy price point, so definitely a good buy there. For the motherboard, I went, I decided with the MSI B450 uh, Tomahawk Max ATX AM4 motherboard. This is around $115, give or take. You might be able to find it a little bit cheaper. It's pretty stacked with features. Four memory slots up to DDR4 4133, so you can get pretty fast. 64 gigabytes of max memory supported. As an MSI board, they're traditionally pretty good, and I would say that this is going to act as a pretty good motherboard for the build. This is one area where you could probably get a cheaper motherboard and get away with it but it's not even like $115 for a motherboard is breaking the bank so I thought that was a pretty good option RAM again you could go the route of getting eight gigabytes of RAM but I just think it's very very imperative these days that if you're if you are building around $800 worth of a PC you should be getting 16 gigabytes honestly 16 gigabytes is becoming more and more essential can you get by with eight gigabytes absolutely but it's not always about just getting by you want to make sure that you can run all of the big games coming out this fall and even next fall now you get the 16 gigabytes now and you can upgrade to 32 down the line i don't think 32 is going to become a real necessity for a very very long time so i wouldn't even be stressing about that too much but 16 gigabytes while it's not absolutely essential right now it's getting to the point where i think in a year or two down the line 16 gigabytes is going to be looked at as something much like 8 gigabytes was looked at you know around 2011 2012 where yeah you could get 4 gigabytes and get by but 8 gigabytes was really the standout and 16 gigabytes is really approaching that territory 32 200 megahertz here as well and 75 dollars for 16 gigs of ram is really good given i remember the days of ram being much more expensive so this is a cakewalk in that regard okay storage kingston a 400 240 gigabyte solid state drive i want you guys to be getting a 240 gigabyte ssd just because i know the perils of having a 120 gigabyte ssd it's just not the best in all regards you're gonna put a significant amount of that storage towards the os and then yeah you can save some for key applications but ideally 240 gigabytes is great and then you want to back it up with a one terabyte caviar blue the 240 gigabyte ssd is 40 dollars caviar blue is 45 those two in conjunction have always been a winning formula you'll be able to download all your games all your media all that good stuff on the mechanical drive and then your key applications on the 240 gigabyte ssd honestly for a lot of people these days one terabyte isn't even enough when you got games like rdr2 clogging up 100 gigabytes and games of that nature Nevertheless, this setup for what? It would be around $85 for the hard drive and the SSD. I think that is relatively good. Okay, so for the video card, MSI GeForce GTX 1660 Ti 6GB Ventus XS OC video card. This is around $270. Yes, could we have fit in an RTX 2060 by making a lot of concessions? Probably, but the 1660 Ti is still going to act really well as a 1080p GPU and if you're building a full setup at $1,000, chances are you're going to be buying a 1080p monitor and not a 1440p monitor. So I think the setup works relatively well. At 1080p, the 1660 Ti can tear through a lot of games. The majority of titles, I would say, are going to give you really good frame rates and really good performance. Obviously, as is the case with PC gaming... 
There are anomalies, whether a game be incredibly graphically demanding or a game just be a bad PC port. You can't say a blanket statement like it's going to be able to run everything maxed out at 60 FPS. That's just impossible to say. However, your Witcher 3s, your Resident Evil 3s, all of the upcoming games like Cyberpunk 2077, I imagine that they're going to be able to run really well on a $270 GPU and it still offers great performance. As far as the power supply, Seasonic S12 500 watt 80 plus bronze certified power supply. Now, power supplies is one area where I notice the prices right now are relatively relatively high, we would typically be able to get like a 620 watt variant of this power supply for around this price, maybe even a little bit cheaper. So I don't know what's going on with power supplies. They're just a little bit expensive. Nevertheless, a 500 watt is going to be fine. The 1660 Ti is incredibly power efficient and as is the CPU, all of that coming together is going to make this more than enough to power your entire rig. And finally for the main build, NZXT H510 ATX mid tower case. This is one that's a little bit more pricey than I typically go for on a case, but given that the budget allows you to be a little bit more flexible, I still really like the look of this case. It's a simplistic black case, and that's really what I go for. I don't go for anything that is too over the top in terms of its looks. However, something like this looks clean enough, looks aesthetically pleasing, and $70 is still within that budget threshold that I am comfortable with spending on a case. I really am not the kind of person to be recommending, you know, cases that are north of $100. If that's your thing, go for it. If you want the fancy full tower, and you want it to be completely decked out, more power to you. I'm just the kind of person that wants something a little bit more simple, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. In my eyes, I should mention that. Everybody's opinions on what looks clean is going to be different, but I've never been the kind of person that likes to make their PC look super cool. It's just going to sit on top of my desk, under my desk, whatever the case may be, and this is going to be something that does work in the build rather well. Okay, some accessories and things of that sort. For the monitor, Asus VE248H 24-inch 1920x1080 monitor. This is $123. 24-inch 1080p monitor is pretty good. It's actually down to $120 right now on Amazon, so that's pretty good. Um... You can get a 21 and a half inch and save a little bit. I think the majority of people like 23 to 24 inches on 1080p. I'm a minority where I do like 21 and a half inch a lot with 1080p. Nevertheless, this for 120 is pretty good. Lastly, for the keyboard and mouse, you're just going to get a generic keyboard and mouse combo from Amazon. Look, I'm not the kind of person to be recommending Black Widows and Corsair K70s and all the fancy keyboards. I myself have a K70 and I initially had a Razer Black Widow and I remember when I got the Black Widow, I was like, man, this keyboard is nice and all, but it was north of of $100. I probably just should have stuck with my packed in HP keyboard. And yeah, obviously that might be a little bit of a hyperbolic statement, but I really did feel that way. I was like, I was fine with my HP uh, keyboard. Obviously, the nicer keyboards are going to have some benefits like macro keys and things of that nature. But even the keyboards you get on Amazon, these like Ray Dragon keyboards, they're actually decked out with some interesting features and they look pretty aesthetically pleasing as well. So 40 bucks for that. Not bad. And if you need a Windows key, you can go to your favorite CD key seller and you can get it for like 15 bucks. And that would be a pretty good way to get Windows. But that's going to conclude this video, guys. Again, $1,000 in totality. I think it's pretty good, all things considered. A great 1080p machine. You might be holding on to that stim check still. And look, if you just want to blow your $1,200, you can get this PC and then you can have $200 left over for what would you say? Oh, there's that little Steam summer sale coming up and $200 is going to get you pretty freaking far on that sale. So maybe that's an idea, but maybe you should use that Steam check to pay some bills. I don't know. It's up to you guys, but that's going to conclude this video. If you guys have a request for a future video, you can leave that in the comment section down below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.